Well, hello and welcome uh, back to the Alaska Sea Life Center for another Teleaquarium and Sunday Fish Sketch. It has been a while, um, but as usual, I'm Alex and I'm joined by Haley today. And we're pretty excited to draw some fish. We haven't done it in a while. Um, just scheduling changes here at the center and we're opening back up to the public. So just trying to uh, accommodate folks and that sort of stuff here at the center. Um, but we're pretty excited to draw today. And the theme today uh, is actually sharks. So uh, there's really only one shark we felt was appropriate for this. Uh, what shark are we gonna be drawing today, Haley? Yeah, so we're gonna draw the Pacific sweeper shark, which is a super cool shark that lives in Alaska in more of the deep ocean. So it's not seen a whole lot. Um, but it's a really, really cool species, and we're fortunate enough that the Sea Life Center actually has a sleeper shark right now, don't we, Alex? Yes. So uh, while we're doing a little bit of drawing, I'll slap some video up um, and, and talk about why we have one. It's not one of our exhibit animals. Um, it's not like in a, in, a, in a tank that you can really see very well. If you do happen to visit the Sea Life Center, you might be able to spy it uh, in one of our back holding pools. Um, but this animal is actually only temporarily here for some research, for some study, uh, and then it'll be tagged and released back out into Resurrection Bay is our plan. So um, we'll go over exactly why we're studying these animals, but uh, as Haley said, they're just not well understood. Um, and so we are ultimately just trying to better understand them. Um, but why we're studying them is a, is a little strange. So. You might be new, this might be your first time uh, joining us for Sunday Fish Sketch. You might say, what is Sunday Fish Sketch? It is a hashtag on Twitter. Um, so Sunday Fish Sketch uh, is kind of organized by Renee Martin here on Twitter. You can see I've got her, her page up. Um, and basically every Friday, uh, a new theme is announced for that Sunday, for the following Sunday. And so folks just kind of come on and they uh, draw the fish that's selected, and it's not always a type of fish. In fact, it's it's almost never just a single type of fish. It's usually uh, like a theme. So this this week is uh, little understood sharks. Last week was fish with kind of uh, surprising or unique common names. Um, in the past, we've done you know like there was a theme of make uh, like classical art with fish in it. That one was kind of fun. So people just try to kind of keep up with that theme. Uh, and then on Sunday, they do their best to uh, sketch a fish according to the theme. So we're going to do our best to sketch uh, our, our shark, our sleeper shark. So I think we can probably get started with that. I've got my pencil. I've got the colored pencils, but uh, we were talking <laughs> a little bit before this. Sleeper sharks don't really have that much color to them. So Not we really. probably won't break out those colored pencils, but maybe I'll just I'll give them a nice rustle there. Uh, and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we got that classic noise and we'll get started on our drawing. Um, so let me put the uh, document camera up. All right, sounds good. Swap huh? over to that. Uh, you've got your document camera. I gotta get my document camera working. Hey. But I'm gonna put yours up while we wait on that. All right. Yeah, Actually, Pacific while, while we wait on that, oh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. sorry. I was just gonna say Pacific sleeper sharks have a really interesting body shape. So that's gonna be kind of a challenge. Yeah, I guess before we draw them, I'll put the video up. Oh um, yeah. So so people can see what, what we're looking at here. So this is actually video from one of the field collections. Um, now we can only bring some of these sharks back if basically if they're small enough for us to bring back. Um, but we have to go out and catch them, of course. Uh, and they come up from pretty deep. Uh, we go out in one of the, the Sea Life Center's vessels, the Jubatus, uh, and you can see here these animals get pretty large, but this ultimately is uh, nowhere near full grown, so they can get up to about 20 feet. Um, this one's pretty big. You can see what we do is we, we get it, we pull it alongside the ship, we can open up doors on, on the side of the boat there, uh, and then we can take various measurements. So we're trying to find out as much about these creatures as we can, so we actually take uh, measurements um, of the length of the animal. Uh, we look for any noticeable scarring or anything like that. A lot of them have parasites. Um, mm -hmm. This here is actually uh, putting a tag on this creature. So we put several different types of tags. Um, we can put uh, a tag that sort of collects some data and we also just have identification tags, these spaghetti tags is what they're called. Uh, and that way if this creature washes up again somewhere, 
uh, we actually can, can identify that it is one we saw before. We'll take blood samples, so that's what's going on here. We'll, we'll actually uh, get a little needle in there and fill up a syringe full of blood. And then uh, once we get our data off these sharks, if it is too big to actually bring back to the Sea Life Center, we will uh, release it back out after we tag it and after we take our measurements. And so that's what's going on here. We're just making sure we've got all our measurements and then we will actually release this creature back into Resurrection Bay, uh, which does get down pretty deep. You know, we're collecting these animals from uh, 700, 800 feet or so. Bay gets a little deeper than that, but we've kind of kind of found an area that, that really seems to be where they hang out. Uh, and once we release them, they'll just dive right back on down to that depth uh, and kind of just settle back in there. And we can continue to do work on uh, the blood and tissue samples that we collected uh, on, the, on the vessel while we had them. So I'm trying to get my document camera uh, back and working. We're going we're gonna to have that happen here at some point. No worries. But we do have your document camera. So I'm going to kick back over to that in just a second. Um, now, I mentioned we do bring creatures back here to the Sea Life Center, and we've been studying them here. Uh, one of the things I would suggest anyone interested in learning more about our work uh, with these sharks, go check out our blog. So we actually have a science blog for the Sea Life Center, and that is 60 North Science. Uh, you can see the address down there at the bottom. 60nscience.alaskaseelife.org. Uh, and uh, we have several posts on this blog about our sleeper shark research. So you can go on kind of back through that. This is actually uh, kind of talking about them, uh, what they might be eating, uh, also talking about um, Greenland sharks, uh, which is a connection that we have here, uh, talking about over, like uh, the 2019 season. We're in the middle of the 2020 season, obviously. So feel free to go check out the science blog, not only about the uh, shark science that's going on, but just science at the Sea Life Center in general and what we're doing uh, for that. So feel free to check out that blog. And I also had the opportunity um, to speak with Amy Bishop, uh, one of our folks here at the Sea Life Center, about this research. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to put a link to those videos up uh, down in the description below. So feel free to check that out. All right, how is your drawing coming here? Let's see. I'm going to we're, we're doing okay. They kind of have like a weird torpedo shaped body. So I'm working on that. <laughs> and it's coming along all right. They do kind of have oddly shaped bodies. Yeah, they're definitely not. I mean, they're definitely recognizable, I think, as a shark, but not really what you think of as like a great white shark or like a whale shark, like not really what people think of. trying to get my document camera, but so far, I, I'm liking yours. You've got uh, the, the shape down. They do kind of have a very strange shape, um, just stubby, and their fins are all pretty small. Yeah. Uh, I can talk a bit about the research that we're doing with them here while we're uh, watching you. And yeah. uh, the, the research, um, when we bring the animals here, we are looking at a couple things, but one of, one of the items is um, respirometry, basically how quickly are they using up um, the oxygen, that sort of stuff, like with their metabolic rate. Um, because they, you know, sleeper sharks, we think of them as kind of slow, kind of lethargic. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. We have actually um, evidence that they can eat sea lions. And that's, that's one of the reasons that we're studying them here is that uh, the Sea Life Center actually does a lot of research with stellar sea lions, our, our local sea lions here uh, in Alaska. And when we were doing that research, we actually had some evidence uh, come up through some of our tags that we had um, that these sharks were actually eating our sea lions, uh, or just stellar sea lions in general. Uh, and that kind of surprised us a little bit. You know, it wasn't something we anticipated that they were eating stellar sea lions. 
And so now we're, we're sort of studying the shark a little bit more. Uh, and that's, that's the sort of thing where uh, it's kind of like a spin-off of our research. You know, we, um, we, we're looking at one thing, and then all of a sudden this other uh, kind of interesting uh, bit of data popped up, piqued our interest a bit, and now we're studying uh, basically that data. And that's sort of how our research goes, is, is we're studying one thing, that leads to even more questions, maybe in an entirely different area, uh, and then we start studying uh, that as a result. Yeah, I think that's really neat how a lot of the research projects are linked to each other, and then if you find out something in one research project, it might be beneficial in another project. All right, I finally got my camera working. I don't, I don't have a clue what was wrong with it, but uh, yeah, it's it's working now, so I'm gonna be able to start drawing awesome. my shark. And we'll see how it goes. I think one of the really cool things about Pacific sleeper sharks is they can live for a really long time, right? Yes, so that's something we're interested in is these are really closely related to Greenland sharks. Um, mm -hmm. And Greenland sharks have been found to live uh, maybe you know 300 years or more. Um, it's not fully known how, right? Uh, is it a metabolics? Uh, is it have something to do with just them? really slowly burning through their energy, uh, we, we really don't know. And, and with the sleeper sharks, that's something we're trying to look at, of course, are the metabolics. Uh, how does their body uh, process their energy and, and that sort of stuff. And so um, with the Greenland sharks, I believe they're looking at an isotope in them um, that was allowing us to age them out. And uh, you know, it just turns out 300 years, which is pretty incredible. Uh, that uh, you're going to have a, a large critter live that long, um, that people, you know, it, it really caught on uh, the public's attention, um, thinking about, wow, we, how long has this fish been around? How do they live that long? Uh, and that's kind of what we're looking at when we're looking at our metabolics. All right, I am going to try and get started on my drawing here. i got to catch up to you now. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, time. Just trying to work on getting their little faces right. They have a very like downturned mouth. <laughs> More on the under side of body. I think you're breaking up a little bit, Alex. I'm not sure. Oh, well. Uh, did you hear me talking about uh, their general shape just now? No. no. Okay, I did break up then. <laughs> All sorts of technical difficulties on our first day back. Um, so I was just saying, like, you really get in their shape. And you, you mentioned they have kind of that downturned mouth. Yeah. Uh, their, their shape. It's difficult to describe. It's not like stubby. They're not stubby, um, but they're not really that rounded either. Um, no. So yeah, I don't. It's just it's very weird um, their their shape. But it, it they kind of got like a pointy nose um, when viewed from the side. But from the top, they're not that pointy. It's it's it is pretty rounded. So it's just this bizarre shape. Um, their dorsal fin uh, up top is just kind of little. In fact, I didn't even really realize it was lobed. I honestly thought it was like this little ridge. And then um, this shark that we have right now at the Sea Life Center for this research, I, I was actually able to see 
that nope, they've got a little a little lobe on there. Aww. So it's it's pretty cool. Though the shark that we have right now is actually the smallest one that we've uh, collected so far, the smallest one that we've we've brought up so far. Um, so it's pretty cool to see the the difference in size. But even you know it's it's probably about uh, three to four feet, and even that could be really old. Uh, you know that could be 40, 50 years. <laughs> we we don't know. Um, we don't know how how their aging and their maturing takes place. So that's just, again, one of the things we're looking at. And I just got to the point where I was trying to draw the teeth. What are the teeth like? Are they more like little ridges on them? So yeah, it, it's difficult. I haven't seen the, the upper teeth very well, um, mm -hmm. but the lower teeth, yeah, it's kind of just like a little ridge of teeth. Um, and they don't, they're not super pointy or anything like that. Um, it's just this weird little ridge, but the upper teeth I understand are uh, kind of more pointy. Um, again, you know, I, I have had the opportunity to help out with it a little bit um, with getting in and, and or with getting the, the creature into basically there's this big bathtub that they put them in. Um, <laughs> I'm mostly just up on, on the, the, the shore there when they're doing that, but they put in this little bathtub and they can put a lid on that and that's how we look at their respirometry, uh, how quickly they're using oxygen. And so when I've seen the mouth sort of open up, uh, it's not just full of these jagged teeth. They've kind of got this little ridge of teeth down on the bottom. Um, that's pretty cool. It, it honestly uh, really is neat. And one of the other things that we've had um, on almost all the sharks is uh, eye parasites. Oh. Yeah, we get those on uh, pretty much every shark that we pull up. They have some sort of eye parasite. Uh, there are these little parasitic copepods. Um, mm -hmm. Little little parasitic, uh, uh, I don't know. They're, they're like little hanger-ons. They they just look like little streamers that are kind of off their eye. Huh. I've really just fallen behind in my shark drawing here. I gotta I gotta get going with that. I got kind of the general outline going on, trying to make sure it has all the things you need for a shark. <laughs> got my little five gill slits. Sharks have five to seven versus fish will really only have one gill opening on the side of their head. So that's definitely a good indicator if you're not quite sure if it's a shark or a fish. I got that. Uh oh, I made a mistake here. I tried to curve my shark. I always, oh no, uh, yeah, no, I can't. Then that's the thing is uh, we talk about this pretty frequently with our uh, drawings here. Is if you are like, I'm not a good artist. I shouldn't participate in Sunday fish sketch. That's not true. You can totally participate in Sunday fish sketch. I am an atrocious artist. <laughs> Every week I uh, show that. Um, Haley uh, has really gotten the grip down with fish, I feel like, uh, during our time. I, I can uh, draw fish <laughs> decently, but I would not say well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it is what it is. I just, I have no idea where I'm going. But yeah, you definitely do not have to be a professional yeah. artist, as you can see by, by us. And the people on the um, Sunday Fish Sketch Twitter are wonderful, really supportive. It's really cool to check out, even if you're not gonna draw, just to see what other people are doing really cool art. Um, but yeah, if you feel like drawing any fish, whether it's with the theme, not with the theme, it's an old theme, um, it's a great place to look. Their eyes, um, besides being, uh, as I said, frequently having a parasite on them, they're very reflective. Um, you know, these creatures, we're catching them at a depth that would still have some light. Um, so it's, it's not you know, impossible that they would be using their vision. They're not huge eyes, you know, they're not, they're not big like you get with some uh, deep sea critters where they really have these large eyes, um, but they are very reflective. Um, kind of think like if you, you know, if you saw like a cat's eye in the dark or something like that, um, that's sort of what, what we see. Yeah, I think it's a very, like, basically the same structure that's in 
cat eyes, and it helps with seeing in the dark, right? Yeah, and I'm going totally blank on the name. Um, yeah, I think it's called the tapetum lucidum. That sounds right, yeah. That's what I learned in college. I don't know. <laughs> But I think it's like the, yeah, that reflective coating in their eyes. Unfortunately, I don't have a, an eraser powerful enough for my, my drawing oh, skills. No. Yeah. So it's got like a million little ghost eyes here now. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. all right. Yeah, the uh, the back fin on them is just really fun to me because it's just this, this weird little little tiny fin, uh, yeah. and it's yeah. it's much more lobed than um, you know like people think with with shark fin. Let me flip this over. Right, you always think of sort of like, like the, the scary jaws fin coming out of the water or whatever. And mm -hmm. on the sleeper sharks, you know, if you've got their, their back here, the fin kind of comes up and then it really goes back there uh, mm -hmm. and then comes back up to like there and connects. It's just this weird dangling lobe that they've got, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just, it's very strange, the shark. Uh, it doesn't have much in the way of big, powerful um, fins or anything like that. It's not really kicking around too much with them. Although uh, I have seen with the with the shark that we've got right now, uh, it can get a little feisty, and mm -hmm. uh, you know it, it can it can definitely whip itself around. So it's not entirely, uh, you know, um, I want to say like atrophied. It's it's fins. Mm -hmm. The fins are there, mm -hmm. um, but they just don't they don't seem to do too much. Yeah, I guess if they don't need them most of the time, it doesn't really make sense for them to have really large, strong fins, like maybe a great white who's swimming all the time. I feel like you're, you're very much more like getting the shading in, and I've just got this little cartoon shark over here right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like really tiny in the corner of my screen, so I can't quite see it. But I'm sure it's coming along great. Oh yeah, I should I should kick it over so everyone else can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. <laughs> It's looking good. You definitely got the body, body shape down for sure. It's a weird body shape. It really is. I didn't. I didn't like pinch the the tail enough, but the, it's it like the proportions aren't what you expect, and that makes them kind of difficult. I feel like. Yeah, for sure. Um, we do have another shark, I guess I could briefly talk about. Yeah. Um, I, you know, we, we had said like, oh, let's draw the sleeper shark because that's kind of what we have at the Sea Life Center. Um, but we do have other sharks here in Alaska. We actually have um, a, another type of shark called a salmon shark. Um, we have several types of sharks, but um, these are the, the, the two big ones that I'm more familiar with, I suppose. But salmon sharks. Really fun. Go ahead and look those up. I don't have a, an image queued up because we, we weren't going to draw them today. Um, but kind of like a stubby great white. They sort of have almost a great white's body. And then their face is very small um, for, for what you would expect out of a great white. They've just got this little mouth and everything. Uh, they're kind of adorably stubby. Um, they're just like squashed, little footballs. Uh, but they get big. They get up to you know 10 feet or more. Um, 
but I think some of the more famous pictures online are of these little juveniles that washed up on the shore, uh, and some people got pictures of them before they put them back in the water. I just I know if, if anybody's ever been to the Sea Life Center, they have a model of a salmon shark hanging from the ceiling. It's always really funny because everyone's like, what shark is that? Because it just looks like a really adorable tiny great white. Yeah, we, we did that model. And it's like even chasing some salmon. Um, that yeah. kind of leads <laughs> into our, our salmon hallway here, um, which, you know, we, we call it the salmon hallway. But it's, it's just this um, hallway of salmon, I guess. We, we kind of have like the different uh, life stages of the salmon all there in that hallway and uh people you know they they look at it, they're like what is that shark and you kind of wait and they're like oh, it's chasing salmon and usually kids uh really get it together they're like oh it's a salmon shark they, they kind of <laughs> know right off the bat over to your going to just swap back over to your drawing here i'm, I'm loving yeah. the shading you got going on there thanks figured since they're since they're all gray i might do well, the reference photo i'm better. looking at has like some texture to the skin so i'm trying to see if i can do that but yeah they um they're not super rough you know like uh people talk about how how rough they are um i did have an opportunity to to feel the skin on this one it's not super, super rough, but it, it is textured, um, more bumpy, like rough bumps, um, but not okay. like the, the sandpaperiest of sandpaper. Right, um, right, you know? right. All right, you've got your coloring going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig into the color pencils here. Basically, I just need to find gray. So, Gotta find yeah, a gray one. one. Yeah, like a like a blue a blue gray would work, I think. Or if I can mix that. Unfortunately, a lot of these are not sharpened. Oh no. Yeah. That's the downfall of colored pencils. I think these are the colored pencils we break out for some of our um, younger visitors. Uh, <laughs> they've, they, been, they've been well loved. Oh, they have been taken care of. So I'm gonna <laughs> gonna have to find a gray one here. All right, managed to track down a gray one. Nice. So yeah, if you do happen to visit the Sea Life Center uh, in the next, I don't know, honestly, it would be like a, a week. We don't, we don't keep them here for that long. Um, you know, you might be able to see it, but I certainly don't plan your visit around seeing a, a sleeper shark. Because again, it's, it's not one of our collection animals. It's not very visible at all. Um, but if you do happen to be here, you know, maybe it's, keep an eye out for it. The other thing is, is it's from an area of the ocean that's much darker. So we, uh, we do provide kind of a, a cover for it. Um, we put like a little tarp out across the, the pool out there um, so that it has the choice to go into the, the darkened covered side. And that happens to be the deeper side as well. So usually it's just chilling out underneath that side um, and not terribly visible. So I do hope people uh, join us for Sunday Fish Sketch in, in drawing. Um, yeah. You don't have to do a shark, you know? They, they, that was just the theme this week, was kind of these lesser known sharks. And I believe that was actually recommended because it is, it's, it's shark week now. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> oh, shark week. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Not gonna get into it. Um, but I do encourage, actually this, this one was uh, recommended, this theme was recommended by uh, at why sharks matter um, on Twitter, uh, which I highly uh, recommend everyone check that out. That is at why sharks matter, uh, and that is uh, Dr. David Schiffman 
actually, on Twitter. Uh, just fantastic source for all sorts of uh, weird shark uh, bits of knowledge or jokes, lots of, lots of shark <laughs> jokes. Um, so definitely check it out. I'm going to add a little, a little blue into my shark here, I think. It's kind of like a blue-gray. Um, yeah. I'm never going to catch up to you. Oh, on you're this, this one. You win. You win this uh, this time. I, I had a head start. You had, you had start. technical difficulties. I, we always have technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's the reality of all this. But yeah, I agree that checking out information about sharks and learning more about sharks is super important and honestly really fun, at least for me. Um, but sharks are really misunderstood and they're really cool, really important animals in various ecosystems and definitely check them out, find a favorite shark. And if you want to draw it. And if you do draw it, uh, definitely be sure to share it with us. We would love to see it. Uh, and you should just be sharing it anyway, uh, with the Sunday fish sketch hashtag. Uh, so that is just, I'll, I'll actually pop it up here in the corner. Um, it is hashtag Sunday Fish Sketch. Uh, and also slap that other hashtag up there, Teleaquarium. Uh, that just lets us know that you, you followed along. Um, not that you were necessarily drawing along with us. I don't know that we're the best uh, uh, Bob Ross sort of <laughs> guides on that. Um, but maybe you were inspired to, to draw a fish today, draw a shark today for Sunday. And it doesn't have to be Sunday. If you're watching this and it's like Wednesday, Go ahead. Go ahead and draw it uh, anyway. People are constantly posting things from like last week. They're like, oh, I just got carried away. I didn't have time to do it on Sunday. Uh, it's not about, it's not a competition. It's not like who draws the best picture. Although there are some fantastic drawings every week on that hashtag. Um, but, you know, just have fun with it. Learn something. If you, maybe you don't have a favorite shark or a shark that you even know that much about. Maybe go look one up. Just find out something cool about a shark, get inspired by it, uh, and then draw it. You know, that's always fun to do. Just try to um, do your best sketch of the shark and, uh, and share it up on Twitter. And we will see you for future Sunday Fish sketches, hopefully. Um, I'm fighting off a sneeze. <laughs> oh, <you. laughs> excuse me. Um, I, I hope that folks will join us for future Sunday Fish Sketches and also join us for future Teleaquariums is the hope. Uh, as I said, with our new scheduling, we aren't able to do it uh, as frequently as we were for a while there, you know, every week. But hopefully we can get in a Sunday Fish Sketch uh, maybe every other week. Uh, and uh, we would love to bring you more programs like this from the Sea Life Center. If you would love to support us, uh, feel free to, I'll put the link down below, but head on over to the Alaska Sea Life Center's website, alaskasealife.org. Uh, and there you can see the other work that we do. You can learn more about our animals, uh, but uh, you can even visit our donations page uh, and, and make a donation to the Sea Life Center. That sort of support allows us to continue to provide programs like this, uh, but also hopefully, you know, in the future, as, as things begin to reopen even further, uh, provide in-house programming as well. So uh, hopefully you have enjoyed your time with us today for a Sunday Fish Sketch and for a Teleaquarium presentation from the Alaska Sea Life Center. Uh, and we'll see you again. Bye, everybody.